Welcome to Learning from Pros, Episode 2. This installment featuring none other than our lovely support boy, Aoi2000, playing tree and protector in a high-level pub. Let's see what knowledge can be extracted from him. Okay, so we're starting off here with Aoi coming out to the lane. And the first interesting thing we're going to see here from him is that he's basically up against a Doom. And he knows this already, so you're going to see something very tricky from Maui here in the beginning. It's actually a very high-level thing he's pulling off. Uh, this is not something you would see the the average pup player do. So what he's intentionally doing here is he's going to plant a Observer Ward here. And he planted, as we can see, a Sentry here. And the idea behind this is actually very smart. Because what's happening is that Doom obviously wants to devour a powerful creep from the small camp. But Aoi is going to make sure that's not even possible. So that's a very, very early clever play from our our lovely support boy here already. So I'm going to keep this here on Aoi's player view. Make sure you can see his camera. It's moving on a bit. And we're pretty much going to speed through the things that don't really matter all too much. Um, I made sure to kind of explain the most interesting aspects of the game. So here, this is interesting as well, is you'll see that Aoi lowers the health of the Observer Ward, so it's ready to get denied as soon as he wants to. Very, very clever. Because the only reason he has this here is purely just to deal with Doom. Because normally, you know, unless a double pull is being made, Rubik would have no reason to ever really make use out of this. So it, it's it's just very, very smart from him. So it already shows his thinking. So what we're going to see here is pretty standard play uh, of note. What I want to really cover here is how aggressive Aoi is playing. So if you're playing with a bit of like a lower level support or someone that isn't like too keen on doing it in the first place, what you will often see is that these support players will like hang around in the back and maybe be a bit skittish to really do too much. But here Aoi will basically apply the full power that is Trian and he'll be very obnoxious, which is, that's exactly what Trian can do. Again, look at the base damage he has. And, you know, between that and like Leech Seed, he can be so very, very punishing on lane. It's crazy. So we're going to see a bit of this. Nothing too special. Uh, he's laning with a Pudge. Pudge is actually very, very powerful this patch, especially as a safe lane. Uh, I myself have about 70% win rate with it. It's it's just very vile. So it's a very good lean for Trient. Let's see, keeping the creeps here. Aoi being a very clever boy. So what's going to happen here in a few seconds is that Aoi is going to amp up the aggression a bit and they're going to get a kill on Rubik. You can see he is the hook coming off there. So he's going to chase after Rubik here. Notice how he uses the tree line. He's going to find him. And Doom is, of course, going to chase after him. And, of course, he is going to get the kill here. Now, you might think that Aoi is actually going to die. And very, very good hook from Pudge there, uh, securing the Flesh Heap stack. Uh, notice how Aoi does this cute little maneuver here. Takes the Courier on top of it. Then he goes around, uses Vines here. And then very sneakily runs around here. So he likely lived to tell that tale, which is very, very smart. Very, very good play from, uh, from Aoi. Now, he proceeds to die here because he plays a little bit over-aggressive. Rubik catches him, um, and that does kill him. Uh, kind of like think this was semi-intentionally as well. Like he had to go back to base, and this early it kind of like can mess with your lane tremendously if you just walk all the way back. So kind of like a semi-intentional play, really. Comes back to lane, and again another kill on Rubik. You can see, there's a bit of a funny pause there. You can see how he uses Vine to kind of alert his Pudge, if you just rewind really quickly here. You can see how he also, yeah, welcome to Dota Replay System. He'll use Vines here. It's a good indicator to Pudge that he wants to kill Rubik. Of course, Pudge instantly goes in after it. Very, very good. Like, they have so much slow and just aggression on this lane. Let me just do this. This happens when you scroll around and replays a lot. Um, I was hoping Val updates that soon. But yeah, this is a definite kill on Rubik here. So again, very, very good by Aoi. And here at 3.30, we're finally going to see that this ward that I covered in the early, he's actually going to go and deal with that. So now you'll notice how he goes and uh, he takes that away. 
So now that's pull worthy. He's gonna check if there is a rune which spawns at three. He finds out there wasn't, and that means that by proxy of Rubik having died, there's only one evil boy that could have taken that, and that's of course Doom. So move here. Now What's ended up happening here is like mostly this is going to be pretty standard stuff. You can see Doom here, like he expected someone would have had to take that. Aoi now knows that Doom is not lane, so Pudge can just stand there solo. And one thing I'm going to be covering in pretty much like for the next like eight minutes, uh, more like four, is that Aoi is basically just going to mostly run around and play pretty standard terrain right now. But what he's doing also is that he's being very active. Good kill on Doom there, of course. He's being very active and he's doing things. So what you will often see a support player doing, if you play, I want to say almost any anywhere below, like even numbered immortal, you'll see them hang around with the safe laner a lot and just kind of like leech levels. And you can do so much more than that. And Aoi is really proving that. He actually got a kill on Doom, which is again, not even position four, he's a position three. So as soon as like Pudge doesn't need him, you will notice that Aoi is making sure that Pudge is getting maximum level um, without him having to leech from it. Now, this does come back to bite him in a sense because he's going to be a bit on the lower level as we reach about level, like, minute 10 in this game. But besides that, he's really doing a lot. Here comes, like, the first pull here from Aoi. Barely gets it. Rare three pull there. Comes into health punch. But yeah, like I said, mostly for the next two or three minutes, it's pretty standard tree in play. Nothing too much. The most noteworthy thing is really that Aoi is very aggressive and he clearly plays a lot around being as useful as he can be where he can be. Also very good pull there to make sure Doom doesn't get a free wave. And that's like the most early takeaway from this game in particular is like how good Aoi actually is at making his position do as much as it can. It's actually extremely impressive because... Um, You'll see this quite a lot in your pub games where supports will literally just hang around. Uh, they'll either constantly pull or they'll just sit and wait. And the thing is you can do so much more. And I'm going to talk more about that as we get further into the game because there's some good stuff Aoi ends up doing here, uh, especially like in mid-game. He finds Rubik. It will not turn into a kill, sadly. This is what I said, standard tree and stuff. Just making sure his punch has an easy lane. At this stage, Pudge preferably don't really want to sit here too much, if he can help it. It's a bit better if he can get it, uh, the lane in a bit of a safer position. And sure enough, Aoi, of course, being the smart boy that he is, is making sure of that. Because this is actually the one time you do want to pull. You don't want to sit and pull if the lane is here, because then you bring it into your tower and then you bounce the lane. And Aoi knows that, but because the lane is up here, what does he do? He applies a little bit of harassment and then he goes in here and he pulls. It's just steeped in knowledge. This guy knows what he's doing. I mean, it's Aoi. He's really, really good. Uh, it's, it's also worth noting that no doubt he has checked his Pudge's item and he sees he has Vanguard. So he knows Pudge can take quite a bit of punishment. Realistically, there is kind of literally no way they can kill him until Doom has Doom. And again, this goes all the way back to me talking about how because Aoi left early and actually killed Doom on mid and let Pudge have solo experience, Pudge is much higher level than Doom is because he hasn't been sitting there and leeching. And that's massive for your your the core you're playing with. So there comes the pull. Very, very good pull by Aoi. But besides this, not too much interesting happening. I mean, it's very, very powerful what Aoi is doing. Trust me, it, it's, it's awesome to see. And he's mostly just gonna mob around. See, try to get a kill, realize he can't, and now the lane is pushed again. And of course he wants to do something, and again, it bears repeating yet again, notice how he could have just sat here 24-7 together with Podge, and just nothing would have happened, because realistically it's like really, really hard for him to get a kill here, because what happens, you know, he lands a great, uh, the, the, his vine attack, his nature scrap, I keep calling it the vines, and then Podge hooks, and then Rubik, throws them away like they, they will not get a kill if it's up here and now he knows it so instead of just wasting his time he can either pull again or he can go mid and he decides mid is what he wants to do here and 
And he actually drags a creep wave with him as well. Or attempts to here. Very, very clever stuff. This is obviously things you don't see on a on a lower bracket. So he's actually trying to like feed his punch as many levels as he possibly can. Goes mid. And here is about here things are gonna like heat up a little bit. So we're gonna have a fight in some odd 30-40 seconds. I've noted all of it of course. Um one thing of note before the fight starts as well, Aoi really, really pays attention to this tier one tower. So if you ask any high level player, they'll probably tell you that the most important tower in the game is the position one mid tower, uh, because it's simply such a crucial spot because you can port there and it gives you access to pretty much everywhere. It's close to Roche Pit, it's close to the enemy's mid, it's close to, to jungle. It's just a very, very powerful tower to have. So the longer you can hold on to it, the better. And you'll see a few minutes from now, I we will be very, very stocked up on this tower and make sure it does not go down. So we're gonna have a little bit of a fight breaks out here. So I'm gonna like lower the speed a bit because it's about to go down. See so Pudge is farming. And again, Aoi is just here. Obviously, he doesn't know a fight is about to break out yet. Um, since there's no one on mid, there's nothing wrong with a position 5 going mid in order to get a bit of farm and uh, just inhabiting the lane. It's better than everything just going completely to waste. Again, it really comes down to whether or not like there's anything more urgent to take care of. Like, for example, if Putch is in mortal danger, then obviously that ends up taking priority. But Putch doesn't need him to like hang around anymore. He's just being useful where he can be. Uh, and it just shows a lot of knowledge on Aoi's side. Like doing what he can with what he's given. So we have a fight coming in here. And you can see again, Aoi helping out. He's not sitting somewhere farming or anything. He is actively being a participant and helping his team here. A very risky fight, Tiny does go down. But here comes the powerful Srak. And ooh, that's close, but the tree and heal is very, very powerful. And he's do he does go down, sadly. Lina dies. And again, because Pudge was farming with his ult, there's not really too much he can do. On top of that, he doesn't really have a blink or an axe yet. It is a bit early after all. So a little bit of a decent fight there. Going on for them. We see here. This is where Aoi is basically gonna sit and be mid a lot from now. He's gonna probably pull this, unless he wants to finish it off entirely first. That one I actually can't remember. Yeah, I can just finish it off. He pulls uh, Ancient Camp. And this, again, I'm going to pause briefly here. Hopeless Rack does not mess it up. Ooh, barely. Very, very close. So this is a common theme, and I'll I'll put a pin in it as we see it later in the stages of the game as well. Aoi, when he isn't farming, or like, not farming, but if he isn't actively trying to push out a lane or help the tower from not getting hit, he is very often going past a creep camp and stacking it like he's very aware of this timing and it's very important that you stack like that as a support when you're able to and i know it's not easy it never is because dota is a hard game it really is difficult and we have so many things going through our heads as we're playing it but this is just one of those like habits that's really powerful picking up on and you just need to like watch this replay and you can see that when Aoi does have time, he is looking at the timer. Obviously, we can't see his eyes, but he's clearly looking at the timer and he is making use out of it whenever he's in transit somewhere. It's very, very good. So now he'll be mid, like I said, and he'll hang around here for quite a while. Uh, and again, the game slows down a bit to a crawl for a few minutes now. So I'm going to speed up a little bit here just so we don't waste too much time. Don't want this video to go on too long. This second episode of ours. You see, he, he, he inhabits this area because this is the most important place he can kind of be right now, uh, assuming he's not actually trying to help out his team, that is, of course. And again, what did I say? The timer. Again, this is just so smart. It it, it really does add up that he, he thinks like this. A lot of players will just sit mid, even if they're not lasting. They'll just kind of sit, but he's actively every second of this game doing something that can benefit his team in particular. Uh, the way he, he pulled for Pudge early, he pulled a creep wave all the way from here to all the way down here past Rubik. 
and all the way over to Pudge, it just steeps in him having the knowledge and just the experience to understand how to amplify his team the most. And we'll see this in his item choices as well. You can see he's going for a Veil. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. It's uh, it's some good stuff. So he's farming. Or pushing out Creep Wave as well, if you will. He has a smoke. Uh, a lot of uh, sentries on his person, in case. So there's a Rubik here. That goes in. And he will go down. Again, the sound also has a tendency to mess up a bit, but that's the replay we have in Dota right now. It, it, it is a bit janky. If we fast forward a bit, that should do it. So we're gonna go back here quickly. So he just takes care of the tower here and he basically ports up here. And this is important. I'm gonna put another pin in it here uh, because it is important. So if we talk about Treant as a hero, a lot of people will play Treant in a way that's quite, let's just say static. Um, they usually will resort to this meter hammer playstyle, and it's not like it's inherently bad or anything. It's just that it's it's it, it's quite common, and it's how he was played a few years ago. And it's kind of a playstyle that's still powerful, of course, uh, but it's kind of stuck around. And a lot of people like playing Treant like this, where like post 10 minutes after the laning stage is over, they'll transition into this where like, they'll sit somewhere like this and just constantly push towards the tower and they'll get meter hammer as fast as they're able and just keep being a nuisance. And it works, it, it, it totally is a strategy that works. Uh, but that's also why I, I am more inclined to point out that Aoi is constantly porting. He's constantly being useful to his team. Notice how he's porting. He could have sat mid here. He could have gone for the mid tower actually. He could have been down here but he actively ports to his team in order to assist them, and he does have ultimate. So we're gonna see a fight come up here. He's gonna come in and they're like, oh hell, there's a tree and that's not good. And sure enough, the root will lead into a kill for the Shrek. And that really is it, man. Like we, we will see how like Aoi is just so good at knowing when to do what. It, it's really pleasant to see because anyone can pick up Treant and just sit and not really AFK farm, but just constantly sit in one lane and just farm away at it, chip away at it until like they push. That's not hard to do, but doing this in between where you're you're helping your towers, you're farming a little bit and then you help your team, that is something you will not see most Treants actually do. It's not uncommon at all to see a Treant only show up for about 10 to 20% of your fights in the average pub game where he's present, pretty much, until like late game where you, you're just blobbing up, you know? But here Aoi is like, you know, less than 15 minutes. He is actively, he, he he's he's with it. And again, as I mentioned before, right after the fight, what does Aoi do? Look at the time. He instantly goes down here, instantly, instantly. No, no guessing. He doesn't just hide around. He doesn't mess around here. There's no reason for him to be here. Instantly goes down to ancient camp, starts pulling it. And this is what I mean. He constantly, this guy always has a plan. He never does not think on what to do next. Like he, he always has a plan with what he's doing. And it's just so important because like Dota is such a game of so many wheels turning, if you will. He's elbowing on the track. He even veils it, very, very smart, which will amplify again. Remember that veil of discord is not just magic. It is, it is spells being cast. So everything will be empowered there. That's also why he's done it. Uh, the Veil of Discord is actually a very interesting pickup on Aoi here in particular because uh, mostly we'll see the Holy Locket or the Meteor Hammer build. And he clearly built Veil mostly because he has two people, Lestrak and Putch in this case, really dishing out a large amount of magic damage. And he's just increasing it with 18%, which is a lot. He's he's basically giving both of them a free Kaya just by virtue of existing and pressing Veil of Discord. And you'll see him make a lot of use out of that in this. And again, he's not porting out to farm anywhere. He could be here. He could be a bit of a, a nuisance to Lena. He could try to go mid tower. He goes with his team. He goes for the counter ward play. Very, very active. It's just such a joy to see him. Um, it's very inspiring stuff for would be support players. I highly recommend like uh, you generally try and find Aoi clips. He, he's very good at what he's doing. Keep moving, nothing too much. There's going to be a bit of a Marana play here soon. Uh, he's going to move around. He's also going to find a kill here on Pango. And again, I can't state enough, he's not idling. He is actively doing something at all times. It's it's just so lovely. 
it's very evident. He's not looking at what other people are doing. I mean, he, he he's making sure of like he knows what they have and you know where they are, but he's not actively sacrificing his own value as a player by just wasting time and looking at other people play the game. So there's going to be a bit of a kill here on Pango. Here in a bit. And he wants to go in for it, of course, as you can see, using the aggressive tree line. And Pango obviously wants to defend, again, much like how Aoi wants to inherently protect his mid tower, which he has done. Enemy Dive would also like to protect their mid tower, but it's a bit harder for them because they're behind. So that's going to be an easy kill. He doesn't even need to rot. That's good, so that's an easy, most important tower in the game. And again, he's with his team, he's not farming somewhere. This is the least egotistic train you'll ever see in your bubs. <laughs> it's actually kind of wild. Uh, Aoi definitely is like a true team player. And again, there's nothing wrong with like sitting and playing Meteor Hammer train, there's not. But when you, you watch Aoi, it's, it's obvious that he really, really, really does what's in the best interest of others. Finds Doom here. Together with Tiny. Ooh. And they are going to kill him. It's a very, very cute Marana play. Very good combo. And to quickly talk about that, and this is not so much an Aoi thing, but just because like we were covering pups here. What you'll see a lot of pup players here do is that they'll pull the trigger a bit too soon. It's not uncommon for Tiny to, like the moment he sees Doom, he doesn't just chase after him, just instantly does his combo despite Marana not being in position for it. Uh, gotta be careful with that kind of stuff. Here we see all three players, including Aoi, clearly following Doom, knowing that he's unaware of them, and they wait until Doom is in a situation where he's gonna get insta blown up. It's very smart. Very smart. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. And here we're gonna see him. I wrote down here that he is stacking again, which is very important. And I want you to pay attention to his camera movements. It can be a bit hard to see because he does it very fast, but he basically is panning over to towers and he, you'll see him do this throughout the rest of the game. He, he's very quickly panning to towers to check up on them. And this is not like it's uncommon for a tree to do, but it's more like he's keeping aware of the situation. He's finding out how much health does my towers have left and he is actively healing them and making sure that they are taken care of and also going to talk a bit more about this later in the replay uh, but briefly I mentioned this in a video about supporting uh, a previous video I made where we'll see higher level players use couriers to get a bit of vision of uh, wards on high grounds and here we see Aoi doing exactly just that you'll actually usually see him doing this in times where after one team fight like if there's a fight here that's been one or something he'll ferry out a sentry or two and maybe a ward he will then before the courier returns to the, his base he'll make use out of it to get a bit of vision and uh, see if wards are high ground small thing very valuable and again notice how he quickly pans for mid so we're gonna see here he's gonna stack and again like I keep saying he is very aware, it's very impressive, like consistently, he is just stacking. Every time he is able to do it and he is not overburdened with something else, he is very much giving a stack to usually Lysrak or Pudge. Again, keeping up on that tower, he will not let that fall, which makes sense. Your side towers, like tier 1 and tier, well, just mainly tier 1 on side lanes, doesn't matter all too much, but that mid tower, it's juicy and you want to it easily falls, so you want to like keep it healed up, and you can see again how he. It is very much what he wants to do. Standard stuff. Speed ahead a little bit because nothing too interesting is going to happen here. Roll down in my document here. Again, applying a little bit of pressure. A bit like uh, this is looking a little bit like more like a normal train all of a sudden, but it is because nothing's happening. Again. Um, one thing you'll also see is notice how he has a um, TP scroll ready. He's not porting around to towers in order to farm as fast as he's able. He's saving that. If for some reason there's randomly a smoke play being done here and the enemy, the dire, collides on Putch here, he is ready to port in and help. I guarantee it. He is. Uh, he's just that kind of like a selfless player where he's playing so much around someone else. He ports there because his team is there. Again. Not because to farm, but because he wants to do something. We'll also see here, and he's probably, again, when, when I cover a replay like this, when you watch a replay like this, you cannot actually see uh, what people are saying in chat. 
Uh, but he does have smokes, and there is going to be a smoke play here as well. So, like, this entire board was really for a reason. And that was made by Tiny, of course, but he also has some. So they're going to smoke here. And we're going to move down a bit, because this is where Pudge will find Doom. And we'll see how he goes in here. And this is very important. It's a small thing. Uh, it's a big thing, but... Notice how he doesn't instantly just use Overgrown. He's waiting, or Overgrowth, sorry. He's waiting with it. He's being a bit cautious. You can see Lena's coming in, and as soon as Lena comes in, it gets the whole spiel and gets three of them. Very, very clever. Again, briefly talked about pulling that gun, like that trigger a bit too early. None of that with Aoi. Steeped in knowledge. He doesn't hesitate when, uh, when he needs to. He does the right play. And again, is Aoi somewhere farming? Is he mid trying to farm this? Is he here trying to get a tier one? Nope, he is very actively fighting with his team, being as useful as he can uh, to help them. Again, the sound is yet again a bit mushed. You'll have to write Valve about that. Whenever we're, there you go, it's back. Whenever we get a a spring update, maybe they'll clean up the replay system a bit. I know Bulldog has been complaining about it quite a bit. It's been a bit like this for, for quite a while now. One can hope, because it is pretty much the best replay system in just about any game, I'd say. So, he goes down here, and again, after the team fight is over, he has a decision to make. What is he going to do? Is he going to go with his team? Is he going to go somewhere like to split push? Is he going to try to go stack? He sees Rubik being down here. He does want to protect his tower, so this is where he's headed. And you'll notice here how he will have vision on Rubik. And he's clearly giving the opportunity for a kill. You know, he could just be like a standard train, just see this and instantly just vine it and start trying to kill it. And that would make Rubik go away. So he's probably communicating with his team and telling them, yep, there's a Rubik here. If you want to do something, there's that. Um, they also do see the majority of Dire here. And now he does reveal he's there because, again, he does protect his towers. So again, everything is steeped in knowledge and just being smart. His team going at it. And again, he isn't here. Yet. His team chasing after Doom. And a lumbering tree in behind. And just to quickly talk about his, his uh, build, uh, the most interesting aspect is indeed that he's going Veil of Discord. His item, or sorry, his uh, skill build is nothing really too special. It's the kind of standard Trin Fafir where you go one in Nature Scrap, two in uh, Leech Seed, and then you max healing. Uh, the interesting aspect is really that, well, two things, actually. He doesn't have Shard yet. A lot of people will get it at 15, and then they'll run around and be invisible. Uh, and the fact that he is clearly playing as much around his team as he is. A lot of people like to play independently. Um, it can work. It doesn't have to be bad. But again, it says a lot about Aoi's selfless playstyle. Uh, it's very, very redeemable. Or commendable, I should say. Not redeemable. He doesn't need to redeem himself. <laughs> so, again, I'm going to put a pause here because this is important, as I've written in my notes. He instantly starts going for the enemy territory here. Um, so with nothing happening, he's trying to garner vision. Uh interesting thing here is that he's basically gonna go up and take this intentionally uh after because like right now it is under their control but um enchantress is gonna go here and take it and he's gonna let her well he's not gonna let her but he's gonna go and deal with that and this looks like a very over aggressive play to the naked eye you'd be like why would he ever do that he's clearly in danger and it's very obvious what's about to happen here is that aoi is sacrificing himself uh for the sake of getting something started. So you'll notice he's going on, on her here, right? And he instantly, he knows he can't kill her. It's an enchantress, right? Like she, she she will not die from him, not at all. So he starts instantly taking this. And what's gonna happen here is that he's gonna get collapsed upon and he's gonna, well, he's just gonna die very quickly, as you can see, no problem. But this play was not without intention. I guarantee it. I, this looks like it was just, oh, he was just out of position and not thinking. Player of this caliber doesn't do something like that. Everything he does is steeped in decision-making. And what he was hoping for, and what will also come to pass, was that enemy wasn't showing almost anywhere. It's very obvious that they are scared, and they have every right to be because they're behind, and the enemy is very scary. 
What is one way he could lure the enemy to deal with him? He could try and take outpost. And sure enough, he did make them clump up. And he probably wanted his team to respond a little bit faster than this, but ultimately it is what it is. Um, but that still doesn't, as you can see, even does a laugh emote. That still doesn't change the fact of like what is about to transpire here, as you can see. So, Aoi intentionally got himself killed in order to make stuff happen. And here you go. The fruits of his labor is here, as she will also die again. The dear enchantress will stand no chance here. And you can see how much they're getting for this. Uh, it's really, really good. They are just completely going through. And again, Aoi respawning, our boy, instantly heals someone, ports to middle, pushes that out, instantly helps his team. Selfless man that he is. So again, that's really like a higher level thing there, uh, what he did. And it's oh, it's it's so inspiring and just delicious to see plays like this because you you just know that he didn't just do that like without thinking. There is definitely something there. He he definitely did a cute little setup where it's like, yeah, he uh the equivalent is basically like he's a pawn in a chess, uh in a game of chess. And he knew that by sacrificing himself, he'd end up getting a queen as a result of it. And sure enough. Literally the entire enemy team, including an Enchantress buyback, just completely gets obliterated. All because he flushed them out of where they are. Very, very smart player, this man. I've said that many times. <laughs> so now nothing's going to happen a bit. Um, usually after something like this, the enemy is even more cautious. Um, again, they were already cautious, but he dragged them out by being uh, tricky. So what's going to happen here is, what do you usually do when the enemy is cautious? Well, you either farm a lot and establish a lead, or at this stage of the game, there's a certain big boy over in Roche Pit that you want to take out, and that's what the, the Radiant team and Aoi is going to do here. Now, this seeks to do two things, primarily. Again, he uh, dewards. This seeks to do two, two things primarily, okay? So the good thing about them doing this is one or two things are going to happen, right? Because that's just how Roche Pit fights go. The enemy knows that they're doing it, or probably not guaranteed, but they are expecting it, yeah? So there you go, they're gonna go for Roche. So what ends up happening here is the enemy probably knows they're doing it. In this case, they do know they're doing it. They have two choices to make. A, they decide to let the enemy have it, and now the enemy that's ahead with a Pudge or a Lasrak will also have an Aegis. This is extremely bad no matter how you look at it. Or B, you try to make a Roche fight happen, even if it's difficult, which is also kind of bad, but you don't want the enemy to have Aegis. Aoi is in a roundabout way, and again, he's not the one necessarily instigating this. So, well, maybe he did, we don't know, because we don't hear his voice. But this is roughly akin to the same play that we saw Aoi do here, where this Roche is meant to be a come at us then, if you want, kind of play. They want them to come in here. Of course they do. Now the sad part here is that Tiny isn't present. Tiny is actually kind of out of position here and he's kind of farming and not with his team. Which is a shame because he has uh, he does have TP. And what we're going to see here is a fight that actually doesn't go all too well. But uh, Roche will go down. And much like I said, you can see the Dire really does not want them to have this either. Uh, they do not want to fight into an Aegis. So Pudge does get it. But he will die very quickly. And Aoi, good force staff. Again, like I said, his itemization. They get a kill on Enchantress. Ooh, some vile bit of stuff. And they go down there. Lesh goes down. Barely, though, because Lesh is very, very strong. And then Tiny finally comes in. And that, it's really, really kind of sad because if that had been a fight with a Tiny, that would have gone so much more in their favor. Uh, Putch would ha not have had to, like, uh, jump out of the fight. He respawned with Aegis and instantly jumped out. If Tiny had been there, they could really have turned it around completely right then and there. He does get this. Which is very good. And Tiny does get a kill on Doom. It's not like this goes terribly. It's just too bad. Lasrak in particular died. Aoi is totally okay with dying here. It, like we've, we've said, he's, he's completely selfless, this guy. He, he will do anything that benefits his team. As we can see, they continue. We're gonna speed up a little bit because our boy is dead and he's our main focus in this video. Slow and steady here. Again, ports out here to top lane. He looks at his team. 
And again, it's very easy to grow complacent in this kind of game and just never look at anyone else but yourself. But again, Aoi keeps his eyes on everything. He makes sure how, you know, who needs healing, how's his team doing, what do they have? He's just trying to get a good read of the game. And it's, uh, it's, it's really, really, really good. So here we're actually gonna see something quite interesting. Uh, this is actually a really cute play he does here. Um, I sniggered a bit as I watched this myself. So he's gonna grab this creep wave here. Now most, like I usually say, most trains will just take this for themselves. So he's gonna grab this creep wave here. Another one is gonna spawn here. And he's gonna go grab it here. You'll see in a moment. So he knows that spawns. And you can see like he very much intended to do that because he even like went back in there and grabbed it. And he brings it over to Tiny and Pudge. Giving again, for the second time, it also happened down here in the laning stage, roughly, giving Pudge even more farm. And this really does go all the way back to what I've said about Aoi in the first place. Every play he does is for the team. His stacking, his pulling, it's just, oof, it's, it's good stuff. If you want to play support, there is there's definitely a, a player that's good to emulate right here. He, he gets it. He really is good at it. So they're going to push this. Another important thing that's going to go down here in just a moment is that, and this is a small thing, but uh, it's a very, very important nonetheless, is that the enemy, uh, sorry, not the enemy, the Radiant is going to pull back as five. Uh, something you'll see go wrong in a lot of games is that someone will stick around. Maybe Lysrag is like, I really, 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 really want that melee uh, barrack, and then he'll end up dying for it, and it makes the game so much harder. Uh, Again, could be Aoi that makes that call. We don't know, but regardless, this is very, very smart and it's very, very, very good for them. So, Very good pull out here. And at this stage of the game, usually things kind of slow down a bit to a crawl. You can see they're 18k ahead. So random kills will happen around on the map, of course. But right now they're basically just looking for for a reset into doing something in the game here. So there's going to be an engagement happening here on their top tower. That's tier one top for Radiant in just a moment. We're going to slow down here for that. So there's basically going to be a fight here. And this is Aoi porting in here. Now, sadly, he has a bit of a rough port here. So you'll see here how he ports in. He instantly gets done. That's very, very, very sad. Important bit here is he does get his ult off, and again, extra important is that he's hitting Lina and Doom. Now, Lina does still have BKB available to her, uh, but Doom doesn't, so he's rooting Doom to the ground, which is really good. Of note is also that he veils. Now, remember that veil penetrates BKB. Um, he is actually still taking spell damage, taken increased by 18, and that's important. So, especially right as BKB runs out, he's going to take a lot of magic damage from every source. So before Aoi goes down and he knows he's dead, he gets off every spell that he really can. That's like the most important. Again, his team is kind of finishing off. And yet here we have another case in point, although this wasn't intentionally to sacrifice him himself or anything, but Aoi goes down, but he trades really good by having two other heroes that are much more valuable than him go down. So yet again. At this point, his team are in a situation where they can pretty much just run over the enemy. Uh, gonna speed it up here. And the game is pretty straightforward here, really. So we're gonna see Aoi come into high ground at this stage. Here in a moment. And I'm gonna talk about what we're about to see because I mentioned this earlier in the game. So now there's a fight that's gonna come up here to the right. But before that, notice how See, he sees the fight here. Notice how, like I mentioned earlier, he had some uh, he had some vision ferried with the courier, instantly brings the courier up here because he wants to see if there's a ward. And obviously now there's a fight and that takes priority, but it's more the act of doing that. So you see, he hovers over, is there anything? No, there's not, there you go. Send the courier back. Good thing to do, make use out of it. It's very powerful. Now he goes here, joins his team. Again, he's not off in some random lane where he can't help his team. Has overgrowth in one second. 
goes in here, sees Lina, and this is very important because again, Lina is BKB. And what is something Trina is really good against? Well, he's really good at dealing with BKB targets. So Lina is in complete problems there. And Doom actually does the heroic thing and saves Mr. President there by jumping in in front of him. So he's gonna die for that. But again, that was totally worth it. Good overgrowth. And Lina does end up dying because Tiny does grab a hold of him. Again, sorry about the sound. That is the replay system. You see Tiny also playing really, really well. And that's another kill. They pick up Pango. Lutrak playing well is going to finish him off just fine. And again, off note here, really more than anything, Aoi still doesn't have shard. He doesn't need to be in this. This guy is uh, hes totally content with his item choices as they are. He even uh, procured a race band just to get a little bit faster. Cute little play. And at this point, the game is pretty much over. So we're going to mostly speed up through here. Um, enemy is in completely in shambles. And there's going to be one last little engagement here in about half a minute. But besides that, the game is over. And they know it. Enemy has given up. This is very common. Again, 26k lead. You'd have to do a pretty damn good job of throwing that away. And then we see here. There you go. Quick pick up. And there you go. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of fountain diving. Uh, that's very common in pretty much any bracket in Dota. But besides that, that's pretty much it. Very clean game from Aoi, and just beautiful display on how selfless you can be as a support and just do so much. Uh, now, obviously, it's not necessarily just that easy in low-level bracket games, but it really just goes to show how much you can do. Some pe people will say, oh, you can't really do anything as a support. It, it feels bad. Um, there's so much you can do. It might not always work, but never never say that you can't do anything. There, there's so much. You, you, you're, you can do so much in a game with support. It's just insane. And how he really proves it with a game like this. Just wonderful play by our good support boy here. And that's the dream pop match from Aoi 2000. A very powerful display on how to potentially play him as a support this meta. Let's briefly go over some of the noteworthy things from Aoi in this game. Aoi constantly thinks on his next move. It's very evident when you look at the replay that he seems to have always a plan on what to do next. At no times does he just stand around and twiddle his thumbs, but he's always actively doing something. This is very important. I mentioned very briefly in another video of mine on how buying too many support items can come back to bite you. In this footage, we see Aoi buying support items as he needs to, so he doesn't bankrupt his economy early on. He also makes sure that the Smokes of Deceit do not overstack. His item choices are clearly based around the team he's playing with. The most common build on Treant nowadays are either the Holy Locket Healing build or the old Meteor Hammer Treant. Aoi does neither of these, and instead opts to increase his team's damage as Veil vale and give movement with Force Staff. He's amplifying what makes his team comp really good. Aoi isn't at all afraid of putting himself in danger or getting himself intentionally killed if it means a favorable fight breaks out for him and his team. This is an incredibly important point as you'll often see players refuse to take action because danger might be associated with it. Aoi clearly demonstrates that he's willing to give his life for the greater good, knowing it will increase his win chance of the game. And that's it for this video. If you'd like to see the replay yourself, I placed the associated replay ID in the description of the video. You can catch me live at twitch.tv slash fabkyobashi. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great time grinding MMR at the start of this year.